Imagine this. You're walking down a crowded city street, lost in thought, barely noticing the tide of strangers moving around you. But then, for a brief moment, something shifts. A man in a blue coat brushes past you, and for no apparent reason, your mind lingers on him. You imagine where he's going, what kind of day he's had, whether he's grieving, whether he's in love, whether there's someone at home waiting for him. Suddenly the weight of his existence crashes into you like a wave. He's not just background noise in your personal story. He is the center of his own universe. With dreams, regrets, secrets, memories. And if that's true for him, it's true for every person around you. Thousands of inner worlds, all colliding, yet barely touching. You stop walking. You feel something unravel. This is the moment Saunders strikes, a fleeting but profound realization that everyone around you possesses a life as vivid and complex as your own. And yet, it doesn't stop there. This tiny fracture in your perception opens into a vast canyon of mystery. What if your awareness of him, the simple act of noticing, was more than just passive observation? What if that awareness, somehow, shaped reality itself? Think about it. Before you noticed him, in a way, he didn't exist in your world. Your consciousness hadn't drawn him into focus. And now that it has, he's real, at least for you. Could it be that consciousness doesn't just witness the world, it creates it? Now you can't help but notice more. The way light flickers differently, depending on where you look, how time feels fluid when you're deep in thought, how your memories shift every time you revisit them. You remember reading about the double slit experiment, how light behaves like a wave or a particle, depending on whether it's observed, how particles can be entangled, separated by miles, yet mysteriously connected. You start to question whether this reality you take for granted is as solid as it seems. And then comes the truly disturbing question. Does the world continue to exist when you're not looking? You leave the room. What happens to the objects behind you? Are they waiting for your attention? Like characters in a dream, frozen until you return? Is the sky still blue when no one's there to see it? Or is reality a kind of stage set that collapses when consciousness looks away? It's unsettling, terrifying even, because it suggests something you've never dared to admit, that everything you've ever known might be a projection, not of the world itself, but of your own mind. And the deeper you go into this question, the more the edges of reality start to blur. You recall strange coincidences, moments of deja vu, times when you thought of someone just before they called. You've dismissed these things as anomalies, glitches, in the matrix of your routine life. But what if they weren't glitches at all? What if they were glimpses of a deeper layer? One where consciousness isn't just reacting to reality, but orchestrating it. A silent architect behind the scenes. The unsettling truth is this. The more you examine consciousness, the stranger everything becomes. It doesn't behave like a passive witness. It behaves like a force, a fundamental element of existence itself. And if that's true, then what does it say about you, about the world you thought you knew? You start to wonder whether your entire life has been lived under an illusion, that objects exist independently, that people are separate, that time flows in one direction. But what if that's just a story your mind tells to keep from unraveling? And so the question returns, heavier this time. What is consciousness really? Is it a product of the brain? An emergent phenomenon like steam rising from hot water? Or is it something else entirely, something primary, 
something that was here before matter, before space, before time. You feel it now. The pressure in your chest, the tilt in your stomach, the sense that you're standing on the edge of a great abyss, one that opens not outward into the stars, but inward into the depths of your own awareness. If you keep looking, if you keep questioning, will you find the truth? Or will the world are dissolve into smoke and mirrors, leaving only the observer behind? This is not just philosophy. It's not a mental game or a poetic indulgence. It's a fault line in your understanding of everything. And once you see it, you can't unsee it. Because the moment you begin to truly examine consciousness, you realize you are staring into something that stares back, something ancient, something alive. And just beyond its gaze, something waits now. Peel back another layer beneath that unsettling realization, and you begin to see why this question of consciousness is so profoundly tangled with the hidden forces shaping your experience, and why it has haunted thinkers for centuries. It's not just a puzzle of the mind, but a riddle woven into the very fabric of human existence, psychology, and culture. Carl Jung spoke of the collective unconscious, a vast reservoir of shared symbols and archetypes that shape not only your dreams, but your deepest identity, suggesting that beneath your conscious awareness lies a hidden world influencing how you see yourself and others. Friedrich Nietzsche declared that God is dead, but what he truly exposed was the collapse of absolute meaning in a world where certainty dissolves, leaving you adrift in an abyss of interpretation and perspective. Arthur Schopenhauer described life itself as a veil of Maya, a deceptive illusion projected by will and desire, trapping you in endless suffering because you mistake appearances for reality. Meanwhile, Jean-Paul Sartre confronted the terrifying freedom of consciousness, insisting that your existence precedes essence forcing you to bear the unbearable weight of creating meaning in an indifferent void. This undercurrent of existential crisis flows through your psyche today, even if buried beneath daily distractions. It fuels anxiety, alienation, and the quiet despair of feeling fundamentally disconnected, not only from others, but from the world itself. Aldous Huxley, with his explorations of altered states, suggested that consciousness itself can be both a prison and a portal, capable of revealing hidden layers or locking you deeper inside familiar illusions. This hidden problem, the failure to grasp consciousness as a living, dynamic force, rather than a passive screen, is the source of a profound psychological tension. It shapes your fears your sense of self, and how you relate to the world. Society compounds this by conditioning you to treat consciousness as a fixed container of identity, rather than an unfolding process. You learn to identify with your thoughts, your roles, your routines, blinding you to the fluid mystery beneath. This is why examining consciousness feels like pulling at a thread that threatens to unravel the entire tapestry of your existence. But beyond the personal discomfort lies an even darker consequence, one that threatens the very foundations of how reality itself is constructed and how free you truly are within it. The unseen consequences of this hidden problem extend far beyond your personal turmoil silently molding not only your internal world, but the collective reality you inhabit. Cognitive biases like confirmation bias and the spotlight effect distort your perception, making you believe the world revolves around your limited viewpoint, while neurological insights reveal that your brain constantly filters and reconstructs sensory input, creating a version of reality that serves survival rather than truth. Cultural conditioning layers atop this, 
embedding narratives that harden into seemingly objective facts, like the nature of time, identity, and even space itself, locking you into a worldview where consciousness is merely a byproduct of matter, never its creator. This combination forms an invisible cage where your beliefs shape not just your experiences, but influence social structures, relationships, and the way humanity collectively interprets existence. The eeriness deepens when you consider phenomena like the observer effect in quantum mechanics, where the act of measurement alters what is measured, suggesting that observation may not simply reveal reality, but may play a role in its formation. Entangled particles defy classical separation, hinting at a connectedness that transcends physical boundaries and challenges the notion of independent, isolated objects. Your mind, wired to categorize and separate, struggles to comprehend this subtle interconnectedness and thus perpetuates an illusion of separateness that feels real, yet is profoundly misleading. This unseen trap quietly governs your sense of agency, making you feel like a spectator in your own life rather than an active participant in co-creating reality. The urgency to escape this trap is not merely intellectual, it is existential, because failing to do so means remaining locked in a shadow world where fear, alienation, and illusion persist unchecked. And just when the pressure feels unbearable, a glimpse of a radical breakthrough beckons, one that promises to shatter these illusions and reveal the true, astonishing nature of consciousness itself. Then comes the rebellion, the moment when you refuse to accept the boundaries imposed by conditioned perception and choose instead to challenge everything you thought you knew about reality and yourself. This is not a gentle shift, but a radical upheaval of perspective, a refusal to be confined by the mental cages built by society, culture, and even your own mind. Imagine figures throughout history who faced this abyss and leapt into the unknown. Siddhartha Gautama leaving his royal life to discover enlightenment beyond the self. Nikola Tesla glimpsing the unseen currents that bind the universe. Simone Weil surrendering to the void to find clarity beyond suffering. Their rebellion was a reclamation of consciousness as a dynamic creative force, not a passive bystander. They understood that to break free, you must embrace paradox, uncertainty, and the fluidity of being itself. Counterintuitive as it sounds, this means dissolving rigid beliefs, surrendering the ego's claim to certainty, and stepping into a state of radical openness where consciousness becomes a co-creator of reality rather than a mere observer. Practices like deep meditation, lucid dreaming, or even simply sustained focused attention can serve as gateways to this transformation allowing you to glimpse the world beyond the veil of ordinary perception. This rebellion ignites a profound empowerment. The discovery that you are not a victim of circumstance or an isolated individual trapped in a mechanistic universe, but an active participant in a living cosmos woven from consciousness itself. The journey is not easy. It demands courage to face the void and the unknown. But those who have walked this path reveal that beyond fear lies a freedom so vast it defies description. Freedom to shape your experience, your identity, and ultimately the very fabric of existence. And as this shift unfolds, the final most powerful realization begins to emerge. A truth so profound it redefines everything you thought was real. At the heart of this profound transformation lies the ultimate truth. Consciousness is not a byproduct of the physical world, but its very foundation, the ground from which reality springs like a vast cosmic symphony, woven from bits of information 
and awareness itself. This idea, echoed in the mind-bending concept of it from bit, suggests that the universe at its core is composed not of matter, but of information shaped and sustained by conscious observation. The observer is not separate from the observed. Rather, they are two sides of the same coin, inseparable and codependent. This revelation dissolves the illusion of an objective, fixed reality and invites you into a participatory universe where your awareness is both the canvas and the brush. Every thought, every perception ripples outward, shaping not only your experience, but the fabric of existence itself. The paradox is staggering. In seeking to understand consciousness, you discover that the boundaries between self and other, mind and matter, subject and object, begin to dissolve, revealing an interconnected whole where separation is a mirage. This truth transforms past struggles and fears into necessary steps along the path of awakening. You see now that what once felt like chaos is an intricate dance of creation, one you are intimately part of. In this cinematic unfolding, you stand at the precipice, gazing into a horizon where meaning is not found but made, where reality is a living dialogue between you and the universe. It is an invitation and a challenge to awaken fully to your role as both observer and creator, to embrace the mystery, not with fear, but with awe. The world you once took for granted is now a sacred unfolding, a mirror reflecting the depths of your own consciousness. And as this understanding settles deep within, it leaves you both haunted and inspired, forever changed compelled to live with new eyes and an open heart.